Today we're going to dive into a really interesting ad from the WSOP main event, where Vanessa Selps, one of the most talented players in the entire world, in my opinion, has to decide if she wants to fold the second nuts in a spot where nobody would fold the second nuts. Are you serious right now? Let's get into the hand. And a lovely pick-me-up for Vanessa in early position. Pocket aces and a raise to 400. Vanessa works with the Urban Justice Center, which provides legal services for the poor in New York City. Bowman with pocket sevens on the button, makes the call. Rosen. Folds. Perfect opportunity to play with two lovely women. Noah Schwartz calls. This hand starts off in a relatively straightforward way. Vanessa Selps opens with aces. Good play. Gail Bowman calls on the button with pocket sevens, and Noah Schwartz calls in the big blind with Jack-8 offsuit, which is slightly pushing it, but I would call there as well. Uh, I think it's like right on the cusp. Three-way flop. Yikes, set over set, and Schwartz with the only flush draw. Then they head to the flop, and this is where it gets interesting. Ace, seven, five, three clubs. Both Selps and Bowman flop a set, and Schwartz has the jack of clubs for the only flush draw present. At this point, we know there's probably gonna be a big pot played. We just don't know exactly how. Let's see how they decided to handle it. Noah checks, and now to Selps with a set of aces. Vanessa finally gets a birthday flop. 700. 700 from Selps. Bowman now with the lesser set of sevens. Yeah, what a bad spot for her. This is the, the type of bad luck you've got to avoid to make deep runs at the main event. She calls Noah Schwartz. And he folds. A little surprising there. Noah more in the mood for coffee than clubs. Selps is the first one with a real decision. She can check with aces, and the reason for that would be you block two of the remaining three aces, it's less likely that you're up against ace X, which is the main hand you wanna get called by and you're pushing a ton of equity against, otherwise you're getting called by flush draws, which have reasonable equity. So checking to let people bluff, or you can bet. The benefits of betting, of course, there is still that ace out there for you to get called by. You can, as we can see here, get money in against weaker sets. And of course you can either charge flush draws and, and make them put in money behind, or you can deny equity if they have a middling flush draw, weak flush draw, and wanna just fold. Selps does decide to bet. Like I said, I could go either way. I think it's a pretty good bet. Bowman decides to call. I think this is her only option. I, I wouldn't consider raising here with middle set. It just doesn't accomplish enough. Then the next decision that's interesting is Schwartz's. So he's got the jack of clubs. This is the third highest one card flush draw. He has no pair. Two people who put money into the pot, he decides to fold. I think it's a good fold. In this case, we can see he actually had the only flush draw, but in a lot of cases, either the better or the caller will either have him drawing dead or near dead. Third card now. And another seven! Bowman's long shot has landed quad sevens, which gives Vanessa an empty boat of aces full. A birthday disaster for Vanessa Selps. Selps first to act decides to check. This is a really interesting spot, actually, because if you bet small, you can have flush draws come along again, a hand like king-queen offsuit with the king of clubs or the queen of clubs. But if you bet big, those hands are almost always gonna fold. Selps has to consider all of the hands that Bowman can have, her, her overall range. And that's gonna be ace-x, it's gonna be sometimes a couple of high cards with a club, it's gonna be made flushes, uh, occasionally the lower sets. The biggest question to me is whether or not Selps thinks that Bowman is going to call the flop with a hand like seven-six of hearts. Seven-six of hearts, middle pair, no flush draw with three players seeing the flop. I don't think she would. And so I don't think that Bowman's gonna have trips here very often. The reason that's important is that trips is one of the main hands you wanna check raise against. That said, when you block two of the aces, it's more likely that your opponent's gonna have a flush or a flush draw with king queen. So if I'm selps, I'm thinking, I wanna maximize the amount that I make against flushes and 5-5. Five five. And I wanna to try to potentially induce some bluffs if I think that's the best route. And so one option is to bet. If you bet you are not inducing bluffs, you're probably not gonna get raised on the turn by any hand. It's a spot where it's a little harder to get stacks in here. They are quite deep for the pot size and Vanessa wants to get all in. So I like her decision to check because this way Bowman is going to be able to bluff with some hands like King Jack with a club. If she ever does have seven X, like seven, six of hearts, seven, eight of hearts, seven, eight of diamonds, she can bet and probably call a check raise. This is the way to get two bets in against a flush. It's the way to get two bets in against five, five, and uh, it happens to be the way to get two bets in against quads. So I very much like Selps' check. Bowman has 
a very easy bet with quads. You, you don't want to slow play quads in this spot. I think this is a huge mistake that a lot of beginners make. They see a huge hand like quads. They're like, I can't be beat. I don't want my opponent to fold. Okay, I'm just going to check. You need to think about which cards you have and what that allows your opponent to have. In a situation like this, if it were ace, seven, five, ace, now Selps with quads blocks all of the aces. Uh, Bowman cannot have an ace, and it's a board on which people are supposed to have a lot of ace-x hands in their preflop calling and opening ranges. So that's a spot you might want to slow play because it's really hard to get a lot of action when there are no aces left in the deck. However, on the seven, Selps isn't going to have a ton of 7x anyways, and, and really what Bowman wants to target uh, are hands like flushes and especially ace-queen, ace-king, ace-jack, with or without a club. And so this is a spot you should never slow play. Pocket sevens, uh, do not do it. Uh, you need the most specific and bizarre read in the world. Uh, don't just auto slow play because you have a huge hand. Vanessa checks it now. Gail Bowman with quad sevens. Wow. And a bet of 1,700. Uh, all the chips have got to get into the middle at some point, and all of Vanessa Selps chips are going to be gone. So Bowman bets 1.7K, which is about two-thirds pot. And it's really important at this point that we start hand reading. And the reason for that is that, uh, spoiler alert, Selps is actually going to consider getting away from this hand. The only way that you could ever consider getting away from aces full on this board is if you are hand reading and you know how to hand read. So Bowman bets two thirds pot, what is she representing? I don't believe she's representing a hand like ace 10, ace jack. It's just too thin to start betting that big after Selps bets into two players on the flop on this board. So I think Bowman is mostly representing trips or a flush, occasionally uh, some ace-queen, but ace-queen can't really bet big on the turn, bet big on the river, and expect to, to put a lot of money in good. This is critically important because if you understand what somebody's representing, then you understand what the other player needs to have to value raise against that range of hands. Oh, what a hand. Gail Bowman turns quad sevens, giving Vanessa Selps aces full. Unbelievable. Bowman has been raised, as you see, to 5,800 by Selps. Bowman bets 1.7K. Vanessa Selps raises to 5.8K. What is she representing now? Selps is saying, I know that you have trips or a flush in your value range, and so to raise, I need a hand that's better than trips or a flush. She's mostly repping full houses. Full houses being 7 5, 5 5, A7, Ace Ace. Keep in mind, this is the main event, and both of these players are strong players. Both assume they have a large edge over the field, and they do. You don't want to be putting a lot of chips in with questionable hands uh, early in the main event against a really strong player because you want to use those chips to, to take advantage of great spots that happen in the main event because there are a lot of not-so-strong players. So both these players are already repping very strong ranges. By the time Selfs raises, she's saying she has a full house. I would think that she either has a bluff or a full house almost always. Another huge potential blunder that you probably wouldn't make, never a re-raise here as Bowman with quads, not because you block all the sevens, but because when Selps takes this aggressive a line on the turn, she's saying, I have a full house or I have a bluff. And guess what? Full houses are gonna bet the river and bluffs might bet the river. They're not gonna call a few three bet the turn. So let her bet the river with not only those full houses, but those bluffs. Gail Bowman calls, Vanessa thinking, thank you. But Vanessa is dead to an ace. The river card, not an ace, no bad beat jackpot at this table. In the heat of Las Vegas, a massive cooler for Vanessa Selps. Selps now bets 16,200 over betting the pot. The four diamonds river doesn't change much if you're repping a full house, and so Selps is going to fire out a bet here with her full house. She bets 16-2 into 14-3. If we were to look in theory, she should probably go all in in the main event where, like I was saying, chips are so valuable and people really don't want to bust out, I like her bet of just a slight over bet. So as not to scare Bowman out if she has a weaker full house or a flush, she can still make the call and have enough chips to maneuver and find good spots in the main event. So I really like this play by Selps. Obviously, Bowman is going to raise her quads. Honestly, this is a, a perfectly played hand by both players. I, I would not do anything differently, even sitting here from the comfort of my home office and being able to think through it for a very long time. Bowman knows Vanessa's got something that's enough to put Vanessa all in. 40, 40, Are you serious right now? Let me see which cards, which uh, suits I have. 
So Bowman, of course, puts Selps all in for another 20,000. And note Selps' reaction here. She is not fist pump calling with aces full. She's upset immediately. And she can't believe it immediately because she thinks she's up against quads. And uh, this is something that separates great players from most players. A lot of players here would snap call, would be excited, would think that they're gonna win the pot almost always. But not Vanessa Selps, she knows where she's at in this hand. She knows what each player is representing at this point. And so, like I said on the turn, Vanessa Selps is repping a full house. Bowman is saying that she has a hand that can beat a full house. What can beat a full house? Uh, well, two hands, quads or a strong full house that could beat a weaker full house. Notice Selp says, let me check what suits I have. This is something that probably confuses a lot of viewers. It's important for her to see which aces she has because as she goes on to discuss, she thinks she's either up against quad sevens or ace seven suited. She knows that Bowman wouldn't call pre-flop with ace seven offsuit. And so the only times that she could have ace seven are when they're both the same suit. The seven of spades and seven of clubs are out there as well as the ace of clubs, which means that if we ignore Selps' cards, there would be two ways only for Bowman to have a seven suited. There would be a seven of hearts and a seven of diamonds. So if Selps looks down and she has the ace of hearts and the ace of diamonds, she would know for a fact that Bowman cannot have a seven suited. However, if she looks down at the ace of diamonds and the ace of spades, meaning that the ace of hearts is out there along with the seven of hearts, as much as she respects Bowman's game, she's not giving her credit for, for bluffing here. She doesn't think she's getting bluffed. She thinks she's up against A7 or 7-7. Seven, seven. Wow. This might be a quick main event for me. I don't know if I'm good enough to fold this. What do you think I have? Flush. I don't have a flush. I'm gonna need, I'm gonna need a lot. I'm gonna need a, okay, a lot sorry. of time, I'm sorry. Incredibly, Vanessa seems to know she is beat, but she can't lay this down. Seven of hearts, I mean, a7 of hearts, would you shove with a7 of hearts? If you'd shove with a7 of hearts, then I'd have to... All right, you could have a7 of hearts, I guess, so I got a call. So had Vanessa Selps looked down at ace of hearts, ace of diamonds here, I genuinely believe she would have made this incredibly sick fold. However, she looks down and doesn't have the ace of hearts. She knows that Bowman can have the ace seven suited as well as seven seven. They're gonna be dealt just as often, played this way roughly just as often. And because of that, Selps thinks she's gonna win about half the time, maybe a little bit less as you can tell by her demeanor, but she's getting tremendous pot odds uh, given that a seven suited is out there. Uh, just that one combo, she, she does feel obligated to call. I think she has to call as well for the same reason. And she gets the bad news. You have quads? Oh yeah. my. Quad. Oh. I almost folded. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Whoa! Oh my god. Woo! I wanted to fold. I wanted to fold. I really did. It's like you can have a seven of hearts there, so how can I fold? Yeah. Hey, fun playing with you guys. That's a story. Now I got a story. In my opinion, Vanessa Selps is one of the most talented poker players in the world. She couldn't find this fold because I don't think she was supposed to find this fold, but you could see that she wanted to. And uh, to me, that's, it's incredible. As always in these hand reviews, I, I like to try my best to give you something actionable that you can use to improve your game. Two key takeaways for me in this hand, one is know what you're representing, know what your opponent is representing. That's how Selps almost found this fold. The second takeaway is don't just slow play because you have a huge hand. Bowman had the opportunity to check back the turn here with quad sevens. She didn't consider it. I would not consider it. This is not a spot for slow playing. And in fact, for many of you, uh, if it's not clear when is the right time to slow play and when is not the right time to slow play, just don't slow play almost ever. Uh, it's, it's rarely gonna be right on early streets, especially closing the action and allowing another card to peel off to slow play and trap. You're often gonna make more money just putting in the bet. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and good luck. Honestly, were you gonna fold that? You, it looked like you were gonna fold okay. that. Yeah, if I had the heart and the diamond in my hand, I would have folded for sure because she can only have pocket sevens or a seven. I don't think she shoves on the river given the way the hand went down with any other hand. She's not bluffing. She's not shoving with worse for value because I bet so big. So it's one of those two hands, but the problem is I'm getting such good odds and I, have the, I don't have the ace of hearts in my hand, so she can have ace seven of hearts. But if I had the two red aces, I would have folded the hand, which is insane to say, but like, I really felt like there was a really good chance she had quads. I mean, you heard me on the table. It's just like one of those situations where you're just like loving life until she shoves and then you're just like, this is the weirdest thing that's ever, you know, and it is what it is, it's poker, right?